Musty Hobbit and I am here to talk about some pickups. I uh, got back to my roots in thrifting uh, the past couple weeks and kind of waited a bit. I had some other things I was talking about. I'm not sure if you've seen some of the other stuff on my channel recently, but I thought I would come back and talk about what I picked up before uh, the Midwest Gaming Classic that's coming up next week. If you are in the Midwest and can get to Milwaukee on the weekend of the 8th and 9th of April, uh, the show is a blast. There are a lot of people there, a lot of big events. I know there are going to be some YouTubers there. I know some uh, some friends of mine, uh, Church, uh, who has a channel called The Game Grinder. I've mentioned him a few times. He tagged me in some videos last year as well. I know he is doing a panel and I just heard today that I think his panel, he said, is at five o'clock on Saturday. Uh, and they'll be doing a meet and greet after that. Um, so it'll be him and a couple other YouTubers as well talking about getting into a gaming YouTube channel uh, and how to sort of get moving there. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. I can finally get to meet him. I haven't met him in person yet. Um, so I'm just kind of psyched. So I wanted to get all this out of the way so I can just focus on getting myself ready for that show, uh, which I'm hoping uh, really kind of nails some of the things that I'm looking for on my list. But, Year of Sega, hashtag Year of Sega. I kind of, uh, I'm not gonna say I cheated, but uh, I kind of uh, killed a whole bunch of birds with uh, a big boulder. Um, so I picked up, I got this from eBay, so this is not thrifted. Um, but I got a killer deal on this. Um, normally this game goes for about 20 bucks. I managed to snag this copy. Granted, it's a Platinum Hits version. Uh, but I snagged this copy for $8.99 shipped. Um, and that is Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, which has 40 Sega games on here, uh, including a ton of the big ones. Uh, all the Sonics, all the Fantasy Stars are on here. The Shining games are on here. Uh, Streets, I think all three Streets of Rage, Golden Axe. Uh, there's some unlockable uh, arcade titles and Master System games. Basically, this is gonna give me the ability to only worry about picking those up if they are absolutely cannot miss prices, um, which is great because for less than 10 bucks, that basically, you, if you don't have this and you don't, maybe if you don't collect for Sega, this is a great way to nail a lot of games and just have a good variety. Beyond Oasis is on here too. Uh, and I did start that. That was the Cartridge Club game of the month for March. I got a little ways in, uh, not far enough to really say that I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a very small percentage into this game, but um, I'm looking forward to finishing it at some point. Um, we will see about that, but yeah. Pick this up if you can find it. If you can find it for less than 20 bucks, that is a great deal. You are talking about a ton of games here. So that was the big get. This will make my Midwest Gaming Classic a whole lot easier, not having to worry about that. So now, thrift finds. Uh, I have kind of a smorgasbord of things. Um, I didn't really dedicate to one console. I picked up a whole bunch of things from different systems. Um, one of the things I picked up, and, and I picked it up because the price really couldn't be beat. Um, I don't have a PS4. I am contemplating whether I would like to get one. Uh, and I am planning on starting a fund to kind of make sure that when the time is ready for that next new console, that I'm ready to pull the trigger on that. But in with the electronics, um, not necessarily with the games, found a little plastic bag. And in that bag um, had a copy of Disney Infinity 2.0 and the portal. And then these two, uh, I believe these came with the starter set. Um, this is uh, from Brave and then Stitch. Um, no figures though, um, but I got all of this for under four bucks. And you know, the figures, I, I we're only bound to start finding these all over the place. I know that they are super cheap at GameStop if you can find them. Uh, but this is ideal and at only a couple bucks um, Even if I ended up never getting a ps4 I think I could probably recoup my cost here if I needed to but um, happy to find that um, usually when I see Infinity bundles they're in the 12 to 15 dollar range, which is just a little little out of what I would want to want to uh, jump at there 
So, let's get into the stack. The stack of games. Like I said, I have kind of a mix, um, and I will try not to spend too much time on any of these. None of these really have huge stories, except that um, my big encouragement to you is know the big titles, know the big names. A lot of games you can go just off name recognition, um, especially ones that are slightly obscure. I hit up one of our secondhand shops, and they had a basically a shelf full of DS games. And I looked through, I tried to find some things. I know there are some obscure titles that are ones that you should always look for, but know the big franchises on, especially handheld games like that. Um, this is one of those places where they always flat price their games. Um, so for uh, their DS games, I believe they're, uh, I believe they were $7.99. Um, can't remember because I took the stickers off of these, but when you, when you find those big marquee titles, those are usually more than that. Um, so I managed to find a copy of Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, and Professor Layton, and The Unwound Future. And I, I know that these are both marquee titles. I've never played either of them, but I know that uh, whether I keep or flip, these are going to hold their value. Uh, these are ones that a lot of people are looking for, and they are both in fantastic shape, um, practically practically untouched, um, which is which is awesome. So, um, started with those. Now, the next two, uh, next three things actually all came from one trip to Goodwill, and, and, and I was frustrated about this one because I missed out on a copy of Luigi's Mansion by maybe two minutes. Uh, if I had gotten there, if I hadn't stopped in to drop off a donation, I probably would have ended up with that copy for under four bucks. But I walked in, and usually I, I will eye the game area right off the bat. And I will see, you know, is there anybody standing there right now? If there is, I'll usually hit the other areas in the store that I like to go to, usually the glass cases, maybe the, the area with the consoles, and, and kind of wait for them to clear out, because um, I don't like, I like reaching through somebody to get things. It's it's just not a good situation. And so um, when I, I hit my other areas, I came back and I saw in their cart sitting there was a copy of Luigi's Mansion. I missed it, I'm frustrated. Um, so I quickly looked at what else was on the shelf, and I found these two games that uh, I feel like I won uh, on, because one of these goes for about the same as Luigi's Mansion. Um, they just didn't think to grab it. So um, in order, I picked up Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. This is the title that goes for as much as Luigi's Mansion, uh, and Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Um, so somebody had unloaded their collection or their I wouldn't, they probably weren't even collectors, but they had these, um, and I'm gonna assume that that copy of Luigi's Mansion had just hit the floor as well. Um, but yeah, so again, know your titles. No, this is sought after on every system, and I think it's because it was low print run, because it was the first movie, first game from the first movie. So um, after that, they became a little bit more prominent. They had, you know, higher, um, higher print runs, so. Got both of those Harry Potter games. Um, another trip to the same Goodwill, uh, nabbed a copy complete of uh, Odd World Abe's Odyssey. Uh, greatest hits, but still in good shape. Disc, disc looked good, so I felt comfortable getting that. Got that. Um, then, uh, these two, on again, two separate trips to the same Goodwill. I managed to find a way um, to try and hit this Goodwill somewhat frequently, uh, if not every day, maybe every other day. Um, hopefully I get there and I just I hit it at the right moment. Um, so I managed to get a copy of Bully. Uh, this one did not have the manual, but does have, uh, there's a map that's included here. Rockstar Games, can't go wrong with those. I know that Bully is supposed to be, again, pretty fantastic. And then this one, LucasArts title, um, this is Escape from Monkey Island, uh, based on the original, uh, Adventure game, point and click adventure game, uh, but this one is in actual 3D. Um, I have not had a chance to try this yet, uh, but Monkey Island series, can't go wrong there. Oh, forgot to mention this, those two GameCube titles. The other thing I nabbed out of the glass cabinet was for four bucks, less than four bucks, black first party GameCube controller. Can't go wrong with these, um, and they are 
I mean, wh when they are in good shape, and e even if the, the sticks are a little bit worn, they're not difficult to replace if you need to. Um, but yeah, nab this from under those guys' noses since they were too busy looking at DVDs instead of, uh, instead of scouring the rest of the store. So, again, I'm never gonna pass up a first party GameCube controller. And then again, another trip to that shop. Um, I got another copy, another copy of Halo. Now this, the interesting thing about this, this one does not have the big old Game of the Year sticker on it. This, um, you can judge from the copyright on it, this was a launch release window version of Halo. Um, the other thing, the other way that you can tell that is the Master Chief is not, he doesn't have any shimmer to him. Um, they made one that had kind of like a foil on him and then on the uh, Warthog in the back. Um, so that's how you can tell the difference there. It'll also not have the game of the year. I think it might be, it might be up here. Um, sticker, and I think it also says something down here on the spine. So don't know that that makes any difference. Um, the game obviously has had re-releases and new versions since then, so, um, but I, I, I always like having a couple copies of Halo just in case there's somebody who wants to play System Link if we manage to get a LAN party together to play some of that. Uh, and then this was kind of the big get for Xbox. Um, this is one of the Star Wars games I was missing. I only have a couple left. I'm still looking for a few, but this one, um, again, got it great price by comparison to what I would normally pay uh, retail for this, but this is Star Wars Jedi Outcast, Jedi Knight 2. Uh, this one I remember has a pretty awesome multiplayer mode uh, where you're running around, uh, you know, wielding a lightsaber and it's pretty chaotic. Um, there's also some first, play, first person stuff uh, in this one as well. But again, um, great shape, manual's all there, disc is in good condition as well. Um, so this will go up with all the rest of the Star Wars games that I have as well. Again, only a few more left there. So this leaves me with one final thing. Uh, this is kind of the weirdest thing that I think I've picked up from a Goodwill to date. Um, this uh, is technically a console, um, but I thought that I was gonna walk out of this shop and empty handed, and I saw something in a plastic bag and I thought, well, that looks like a Nintendo 64 controller. I was like, Okay, I'll take a look. And then at second glance, I was like, oh, that's definitely not a Nintendo 64 controller. Ah, forget it. And then I thought, and then I saw one more piece to it that surprised me. Um, so the thing that I grabbed um, is this. And it's called a Power Joy. Weird looking thing, right? Uh, and the thing that caught my attention wasn't necessarily this tip, which I'll, I'll, I'll explain what I believe this is for. Um, but the fact that on the bottom was this cart. In fact, it's a Famicom cartridge. Um, so this is, uh, I actually tried this out, this all works. Um, it is an 84-in-1 Famicom uh, cart and it has a ton of games on there, uh, including Duck Hunt which is what this is for. So there's a trigger, and there's your light sensor, and you can play Duck Hunt using this controller and this cart on a CRT, and it works, uh, which is crazy. Um, in addition, there's a port on the bottom here. Now I know that some of the other ones like this um, have had have come with like a Genesis style controller to, for, to support two player. Um, this one actually came with one that's a little more PlayStation styled, um, which makes sense, right? 64 PlayStation about that same time, uh, mid to late 90s. But yeah, like this is just, this is the weirdest thing I think I've found so far, and it and it works, and it all works, uh, and there's a ton of games. One of the biggest games that's on here is one that's unique to Japan, uh, and that is Devil World. Um, I didn't sink much time into that, but I did try it just to make sure that that worked, but yeah. Um, now I do not have any Famicom games of my own, so I am not able to test and see if this applies and works for that too, but I have reason to believe that it does. Um, so I am kind of pleasantly surprised that I walked away for, again, a couple bucks. Um, 
So the finds are out there, you can find them. You just either need to beat people to it, or you need to hit it frequently enough that, uh, that you'll eventually find the strange stuff like this. So, um, but yeah, this is, this is, this is weird. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it though. Uh, and I'm happy with the haul. Granted, again, this was over the span of a couple weeks, so please don't get the impression that I just, you know, did this all in a matter of a weekend or something. Uh, it takes time, and you will fail just as much as you are successful, if not more. Um, and that's okay. Don't let it get you down. None of these things are life-changing uh, anyways. Except maybe this. But this power door is pretty awesome. We'll have to see about that. Uh, have you found anything recently yourself? Um, please leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on with you. Uh, again, are you able to come to the Midwest Gaming Classic? If you are, please let me know. I will be looking for people uh, and I will be looking forward to meeting people um, either in the area or people from the club. Or uh, So keep an eye out for me. I will be around all day Saturday and I believe a portion of Sunday, probably earlier Sunday. Um, I do need to drive back home at some point. But uh, yeah, if you're going to be there, let me know and I will see you soon. Um, aside from that, uh, please like the video if you did and if you are not already subscribed uh, and you are interested in this type of video or others, please feel free to do so. Um, but uh, I would like to thank you for coming by. I have been Musty. Take care of yourself. Be good to each other.